And do you want to hear something interesting? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5, we are told to live as children of light. For, it says, the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. See, part of the armor of God is living as children of light. Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast, still coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university, where the coffee is good and the conversation is even better. My name is Charles. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now, before kicking this topic around, I do want to give a very heartfelt thank you to T4 Theology for suggesting our topic for this episode, which is the whole armor of God. And, you know, if you have an idea for a topic that you'd like us to talk about over coffee, do drop me a note in the comment section, and we'll kick that idea around as well. Now, one of the things that I always try to do here is to talk about a topic while examining it, examining it through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which is a following of Jesus that involves, first and foremost, a relationship with him, leading to studentship from him, leading to a life lived for him based on everything we have learned. Now, I have found that this helps keep things in balance, you know, in perspective, and authentically real. So, how does focusing on Jesus and this relationship with him, you know, this part of our Christian faith, help us understand what putting on the whole armor of God is about? Well, I find that if we don't keep this in view, well, then we tend to focus only on one aspect or another of the armor rather than on the whole armor and its stated purpose. Now, just a little background for context. See, we need to remember that the Bible is a whole unit and that everything in it agrees and strengthens and helps us understand everything else that is in it. And yes, every passage that I reference will be in the description area just so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so, well, hmm. first, what are we told is one of the primary goals for us as followers of Christ? Well, that's to be conformed to Christ, right? To become like he is, to become like him. So, you know, that he becomes, well, our whole life. For this is how we walk as children of light. And yes, all that scripture that I just referenced is in the description area. So the question is, how then are we conformed to Christ? Well, I find this process described in the New Testament in, in different ways, one process, but different ways of talking about it. The description that I think we'll focus in on here is what is called being clothed in Christ, which is, you know, uh, soaking in his principles, imitating his example, obeying his precepts, precepts, <laughs> and so becoming like him. It is clothing ourselves in humility, compassion, Kindness, right? Gentleness, patience, and love. Oh, and this is to what end, you ask? This clothing of ourselves? Well, in Ephesians chapter 4, it tells us that the goal for which we should be aiming is this that we live a life worthy of our calling, that we are completely humble and gentle 
that we are patient and bearing with one another in love, no, making every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace. For, we are told, there is but one body and one spirit, just as there is only one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You know, and in reaching unity, well, in faith and in knowledge of Jesus, then we will become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We will no longer be infants who are tossed back and forth by the waves, you know, blown hither and thither and yon, by the wind of teaching and cunning craftiness of other men. Well, it is the taking off of the old deceitful self and putting on a new self entirely. It is putting off falsehood. And all that is scripture listed below. And, well, you know what's really interesting about this? This being clothed in the likeness of God and being conformed to the likeness of God? Well, it's not just a New Testament idea. See, Psalms, uh, Psalms 132, speaks of priests being clothed in righteousness. And in, in Job 29, Job talks about how he puts on righteousness as clothing, and he puts on justice as a robe and turban. Mm. So again, you know, this learning from God, and obeying his precepts, uh, imitating him, and, well, becoming like him is not a new concept at all. And Jesus himself, the Messiah, the Christ, is even described in the Old Testament as being clothed in the likeness of God. I mean, being God, that would make sense. Now, this is from Isaiah uh, chapters 11 and 59, which speak of him being clothed in righteousness and faithfulness and as having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the uh, garments of vengeance, you know, wrapping himself in zeal. Righteousness, faithfulness, salvation, and zeal. Kind of sounds like this may be the reason Paul refers to the whole armor of God the way he does, imitating Christ. Okay, so now with this background, well, let's turn our attention then to the whole armor of God as listed in Ephesians chapter 6. See, the first thing we are told to do, the first thing we're told to do is to put on the whole or uh, complete armor of God. And why should we do this? So that we may stand against the devil's schemes. See, our struggle is not against people, but it's against the rulers, the powers of darkness, and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, right? Well, and once we are clothed in the full armor of God, then we can stand against them. And not only can we stand, but we are told that we must stand against them. Now, two things. One, did you notice that this is not about other people? Okay, This is about ourselves being pitted against the devil and evil spiritual powers against evil itself. Two, we must have on the entire armor of God in order to stand. And do you want to hear something interesting? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5, we are told to live as children of light. 
For, it says, the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. See, part of the armor of God is living as children of light. You know, and as for standing, you know, what does that look like? Well, based on what we've talked about so far, this is all about becoming mature as we conform to Christ. Well, indeed, if we take the context of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, all the way through chapter 6, verse 9, well, we get a pretty good idea of what this standing involves, and I encourage you to go and read through that. It's beautiful. So, moving on to the armor of God. Putting on the armor of God itself involves, first and foremost, putting on the belt of truth, which, remember, is one of the fruits of living as a child of the light. B, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, right? And righteousness, as we've seen so far, involves imitating and becoming like Christ. Oh, and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we are told that this breastplate of righteousness also includes faith and love. And do you remember what the two greatest commands are? The two greatest commands ever given? To love, right? And, and, and what was it that Jesus once said? Ah, yes. Love each other as I have loved you. Hmm. Well, putting on the armor also involves, you know, having our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Now, isn't that interesting? It is the gospel of of peace that makes you ready, not the gospel of fighting or of warfare or of even dogmatic theology, but that of peace. Oh, what was it Jesus said? Um, blessed are the peacemakers. See, the gospel of peace is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what gives you the readiness. Well, and then there is, well, the shield of faith. And again, faith is a fruit of living as a child of light. Are you beginning to see a trend? See, if you are in a relationship with Jesus, you know, are learning from him and living for him, you know, that is living out everything you have learned, you are then putting on the armor of God. You are clothing yourself with Christ. You are being conformed to his image. See, this is not something separate that you must do in order to be a proper Christian. It's simply being one. Now next comes the helmet of salvation. See, a well-founded knowledge that we are saved into a relationship with Jesus, well, it, it helps protect us from despair and giving up when the attacks of the enemy are hot and heavy and bring all kinds of doubts, you know, about us, you know, our beliefs, our actions, our relationship with Jesus, right? And, you know, well, about how everything will turn out. See, this helmet. Well, John writes us, that he writes what he does in 1 John chapter 5, so that we may know that we have salvation, eternal life. We can be certain. See, we can stand and repel all those doubts with the helmet of our salvation. And, you know, well, there are two more pieces of armor that we need to mention. First is the sword. Now the sword is the spirit is the, is the sword of the spirit rather which is the word of God and this is to be used against those doubts we just mentioned and against our spiritual enemy not other people see this is about defeating evil and darkness 
in our own lives. It's about living as children of the light, not about conquering others. Well, Hebrews chapters 4 explains this a little bit when it refers to the Word of God as being the sword while speaking to Christian people about their own entering into God's rest. It is what God uses, you see, to reveal our innermost being. Well, that is, you know, ourselves, our hidden and evil thoughts and attitudes. It is what is used to cut out those things that are in us that prevent us from entering into God's rest. Hmm. God's Word. Well, daily Bible reading just took on a whole new dimension, did it not? So, what is the final piece of the armor of God? Would you believe it's prayer? Hmm? And yes, 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 it's not actually assigned an analogous piece of armor like all the others, but it is listed without break or pause immediately after the statement, take up the sword, which is the word of God, right? It says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of requests and prayers. See, the armor of God is not complete without prayer. See, this really is all about growing your relationship with Jesus, about learning everything he is putting down for you to learn, and then living life by enacting everything he has taught you. This is how you defend against the evil one. Well, there you go. There you have it. And there it is. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section, you know, whether you agree or disagree. Please let me know. Now, I do ask that you do me the honor of letting me know why you either agree or disagree. Makes for a much better conversation. Conversations which can help us both grow in our faith in Christ and with each other. Thank you. Okay, until next time then. Well, take it easy. Take it slow and make coffee into your cup. Always flow. <laughs>